I'm Jana Mohamed Zaki and this is Nightline. News making the headlines. Plus to lower tolls on six highways from February 1st. And video cameras will not compromise vote secrecy, says EC. The government on Friday announced that all private vehicles using highways operated by Plus Malaysia will be paying reduced toll charges from next month and there will be no more toll hikes for the next 38 years. The Prime Minister's office said the move was in line with the Cabinet's decision not to sell Plus. In a statement Friday, the Prime Minister's office said the highways are the North-South Highway, including the new Klang Valley Express, North-South Expressway Central Link, Malaysia's Singapore Second Link, East Coast Highway Phase 2, Port Dixon Suramban Highway, Butterworth Kulim Expressway and the Pulau Pinang Bridge. The statement further said that the government would no longer bear the burden of paying compensation to PLUS and this would save the government 42 billion ringgit. That money will now be used for other initiatives for the benefit for the people. It added that Khazana National Brahat and the Employees Provident Fund will remain as the main shareholders of PLUS. This decision was made based on a one-year study and a wholesome consideration by the Ministries of Works, Finance and Economic Affairs. Locals will be appointed as Chief Executive Officers, CEOs of Prasarana Malaysia Berhad and Malaysia Airports Holdings Berhad MAHB. Transport Minister Anthony Loksiu Fook also said that there is no time frame for when the new Chief Executive Officers will be appointed. This is Prasarana and MAHB's respective boards will first need to submit a list of potential CEO candidates to the Minister of Finance. Just let me just uh, let me stress these two are important strategic assets, uh, important transport operators. As far as the government's position is concerned, uh, I'm sure the two uh, CEOs will be remain as locals. The transport minister spoke to the media after the signing of a supplemental agreement between Mass Rapid Transit Corporation (MRT Corp) and MMC Gamuda on the MRT2 line project at the Finance Ministry complex. Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng, who was also present at the event, said he has yet to receive any candidate lists for the Prasarana and MAHB CEO positions. He said that Malaysia has enough professionals who can do the job. At the same event, Lim revealed that the successful rationalisation of the MRT Sungai Buloh Serdang Putrajaya MRT2 project has reduced construction cost by 8.82 billion ringgit. He said the cost was lowered from 39.35 billion ringgit to 30.53 billion ringgit. Penjimatan kos berjumlah 8.82 billion ringgit ini berjaya dicapai dengan membina kapasiti MRT2 secara progresif untuk memenuhi permintaan semasa dengan peruntukan penambahbaikan berdasarkan kepada tahap penggunaan pada masa hadapan. Pendekatan pembinaan progresif ini bagi mengelakkan projek dibina secara besar-besaran dan mengakibatkan beban hutang melambung tinggi tanpa mengambil kira keperluan dalam masa terdekat. Commenting on the agreement between MRT and MMC Gamuda, Lim said the deal will enable both parties to fully focus on completing the MRT2 project on time and under budget. The MRT2 project is currently 70% complete, with its major works expected to finish in 2022 and the line becoming fully operational by 2023. The Election Commission EC will not compromise on the secrecy of the vote in the parliamentary by-election 
with the introduction of video cameras at voting channels on Saturday. Its chairman, who gave his assurance, also stressed that the EC will not do something that is against the law. Ianya akan di 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 angelkan sebegitu rupa agar kerajaan undi terpakai uh, pada setiap masa. Um, apa tu proceeding itu akan direkodkan uh, cuma untuk kegunaan SPR dan tidak akan diedarkan kepada sesiapa sahaja. The EC chief was speaking to the media after checking preparations for polling day at the day one Datuk Seri Panglima Muhammad Dun Banir in Beaufort on Friday. He was responding to concerns that the use of video cameras may compromise voting secrecy. He said the video cameras were a host of new initiatives introduced by the EC to enhance transparency and efficiency. Parti Pri Bumi Bersatu Malaysia or Bersatu has not made any decisions on actions that need to be taken against its youth leaders who were arrested following their involvement in a drug fueled party. Party Chairman Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad said actions will only be taken once they are proven guilty. Uh, there is no decision made except thing that uh, as party uh, members or official, the party has a right to make a decision on their future. But these members who were arrested, uh, party members, uh, will they be uh, put to the security committee? Has been no, we have to wait for the justice to take place. We cannot sentence them or find them guilty without the courts making a decision. Tun Dr Mahathir was speaking to the media after chairing the party's Supreme Council meeting in Kuala Lumpur on Friday. Last Sunday, 17 individuals, including six women, were arrested in a raid at a condominium in Jalan Pucho. They include Selangor PPBM chief Arif Shan Abdullah, who is also the Dunkil Assemblyman, and the Wing's National Assistant Secretary, Ahmad Ridzwan Mohamad Shafi. All of them have been released on police bail. The number of students infected with influenza A in Perak continued to rise with a total 94 students infected as of Friday compared to 79 a day earlier. It involves 55 schools in 10 districts. Perak State Education Director Dr. Muhammad Suhaimi Muhammad Ali said Kinta recorded the highest number of cases with 42 students, followed by Bagan Dato, 19 students, Larut Matang and Salama, 14 students, and Manjong, 8 students. He said other districts such as Kuala Kangsa recorded four cases, while Perak Tengah and Kurian recorded three and two cases respectively. Meanwhile, parents had voiced out their concerns on the rise of the cases and urged the school administrators to take extra measures to contain the spread of the virus. Okay, Selalunya, every morning all the students, uh, they must uh, do salam with the teachers before they enter the school. Mm -hmm. So all the principal will be waiting outside of the school. Mm -hmm. So since we get news from uh, this uh, infection of influenza, yeah. so they are not having a contact, body touching, hands touching with among their friends. So the teacher advised them not to give the hand salam. Mm -hmm. So they will give the salam masra like this and before they enter the school. I must be so. I have to choose school. Jadi percampuran kan kita tak tahu lama lama ini. Mana yang dapat kan? Jadi di sini saya rasa guru lah sekolah pula yang akan ambil part macam mana nak menyelesaikan masalah. Meanwhile, influenza cases in Pulau Pinang continue to spike with 198 students reportedly infected as of Friday. State Education Department Director Abdul Rashid Abdul Samad said the students were from 96 schools with the highest numbers recorded from the northeast districts and Sebrang Prai Utara at 54 cases each. Sebrang Prai Selatan recorded 37 cases, Sebrang Prai Tengah recorded 35 cases, while Southwest remains the lowest at 18. He said so far three classes have been closed. Two
two year two classes at SJKC Lihua Butterworth and one preschool class from SK Pinang Tunggal. Seven teachers have also been reported with influenza. Datuk Sri Tengku Adnan Tengku Mansor told the court on Friday that he was a successful businessman prior to being a minister and did not need the two million ringgit allegedly as kickback from a businessman in 2016. Datuk Sri Tengku Adnan, also known as Kunan, said the money was just a political donation to AMNO. Datuk Sri Tengku Adnan was reading from a statement as he took the stand at the High Court here to defend himself against a charge of receiving money from Tan Sri Chai Kin Kong, the Managing Director of Asset Kayamas Sendirian Brahad. He was told to enter his defence last October after the court ruled that the prosecution had established a prima facie case against him. Datuk Sri Tengku Adnan also said he had declared his assets to the Prime Minister during his stint as a cabinet minister, adding he had already amassed substantial assets then. The money he received from Tan Sri Chai was to cover a 2 million ringgit advance he gave AMNO on Tan Sri Chai's behalf. The money was to cover the party's expenses in two by-elections as Tan Sri Chai had pledged to donate the sum to the party earlier. The by-elections he was referring to were in Sungai Besar and Kuala Kangsar. Datuk Sri Tengku Adnan also said he had been tasked with raising 5 million ringgit for the by-elections at the time and had asked Tan Sri Chai, his friend of over 30 years, to help out. Datuk Sri Tengku Adnan was charged on January 23rd under Section 165 of the Penal Code. If found guilty, he faces up to two years in jail or a fine or both. Hearing continues on January 20th before High Court Judge Muhammad Zaini Mazlan. Police are investigating a man who allegedly raped two people after he befriended them on a mobile app. The 47-year-old suspect, who is in remand for a week beginning Friday, is now facing 20 years in prison and whipping if convicted. The man, known only as Dato Abi, was arrested by police on Thursday at his home in Kajang, Selangor, on suspicion of raping a student he deceived using the Bigo Live app. The teenage girl had lodged a police report claiming the suspect raped her at her shop in Bandar Bangi on Tuesday. She apparently got to know Dato Abi on Bigo Live, where he offered her a high-paying job as his personal assistant. However, she isn't the only one who fell victim to Dato Abi. Police received another report on Monday and are investigating several other rape cases involving the same modus operandi, which investigators believe is linked to the suspect. Victims are being urged to come forward and lodge police reports immediately. In Selangor, police seized a total of 238 cartons of contraband cigarettes during a raid on several premises in Kampung Delik Klang on Tuesday. In the four-hour operation, which started at 6pm, eight suspects comprising five locals and three Indonesian men aged between 27 and 35 were detained. The cigarettes, valued at 125,000 ringgit, were believed to have been smuggled from a neighbouring country for distribution locally. A five-month-old baby girl died at a childcare centre in Bukit Jalil on Thursday after being sent there for merely a week. The five-month-old baby, Tengku Amina Tengku Muhammad Ikwan, had been sent to the childcare centre along with her sister, Tengku Mariam, aged one year plus, with a cost of 400 ringgit per child. According to the victim's mother, Tengku Amina was in good health and seemed cheerful when she was dropped off at 6.45am on the day of the incident. The carer, however, claimed that Amina was found face down at around 3 p.m. before being rushed to the clinic. She was declared deceased after receiving treatment at Clinic Pusat Perumahan Satu Malaysia, Bukit Jalil.
Modenas introduces new Pulsar NS200 variant, the auto segment, after this breather. We're back with Nightline's auto segment. After making its debut in May 2017 and selling more than 6,300 units, Modenas has recently introduced a new variant, the Pulsar NS200, which comes with an anti-lock braking system, ABS. A handful of media riders, including our own Wan Izul Islam, were invited to test ride the new variant and properly assess the motorbike's capabilities on Malaysia's swerving trunk roads and long winding highways. Let's see what he has to say about the machine. Welcome to the auto segment with me, Wan Izul Islam. So for this segment, we'll be test riding the new variant of the Pulsar NS200 ABS. This bike will be taken on the federal trunk roads as well as the highways to test the speed, durability as well as the new ABS braking system. Let's go find out more. Equipped with a five-step adjustable nitrox rear mono shock absorbers, riders can sit comfortably by adjusting bike suspension to suit personal preference. Powered by a 200cc DTSI liquid-cooled fuel injection engine, the Pulsar NS200 is able to generate a maximum power of 24.5 horsepower at 9,750 rpm and 18.6 newton meters of torque at 8,000 rpm. The very thick but light steel-pressed perimeter frame and the uniquely placed underbelly exhaust also provides the extra stability and better control of the bike, especially when cornering. The new variant embodies the next level of performance biking that allows for the average rider to experience quality riding with added safety. So let's talk about this uh, anti-locking brake system or the ABS on the NS200 Pulsar. Uh, it's made by Bybray and it's a single channel ABS brake caliper which will prevent this front brake from locking during panic braking that will help maintain also its directional stability very safe on the road the gearbox it includes a six-speed transmission uh, for of course mid-range response which is for effortless driving in the city which this bike is meant for its speed 0 to 60 kilometers per hour in just 3.6 seconds. The most important brake system for motorcycle is actually front brake. So with ABS function, it will definitely going to help rider. But anyway, uh, rider himself is actually the best ABS uh, generator. But still, some of the riders, they are not really uh, well uh, managing the brake system. So in a very tricky and also uh, hazard situation, hazardous situation, so they will require ABS to help them to prevent the bike from slip and topple down on the road. Compared to the carburetor variant, the Pulsar NS200 ABS variant has a fuel capacity of 12 litres and brings significant improvement in fuel efficiency compared to its predecessor. All Pulsars are styled with lightweight 17-inch double-spoke alloy wheels that reduces the overall weight and enhances the bike's riding performance. The trendy backlit digital instrument cluster displays fuel level, service reminder, digital clock, speedometer, odometer, trip meter right next to a large centrally positioned tachometer. For this particular uh, NS200 uh, ABS variant, we do expect that the sales will go between 120 to 180 a month, uh, which is uh, to maintain and continue to be popular. Uh, in the Malaysia market. And uh, for your information, uh, NS200 has been uh, introduced for the last two years and uh, there are already more than 7,000 uh, bikes on the road. Priced at around 9,700 ringgit, the new Pulsar NS200 comes in four different colours. Wild red, solid yellow, graphite black and mirage white. One is the Islam for Nightline's auto segment, TV Tigger.
In China, over 130 dazzling ice lanterns lit up the night as people gathered in Changchun City to celebrate the Chinese Little New Year, which lands about a week before the main Lunar New Year event. Take a look as we wrap up Nightline this time around. I'm Jana Muhammad Zaki. Thank you for watching and take care.